You're listening to episode one of the Ento podcast. Looking to stay up to date on all things entomorphology? You're in the right place. Welcome to the Ento podcast with your host, Ross Bell. Welcome to episode one of the Ento podcast. Before we dive into today's episode, I just want to take a moment to thank our sponsor, Cricket. Cricket for all your dried, flavoured, and cricket protein products. Find us at www.cricket.co.uk. First story today is one from last week, and it's about Angelina Jolie that everyone probably saw all over the, the net. It's when she was in Cambodia at the premiere of her new film, First They Killed My Father, and she was filmed by the uh, BBC preparing insects to eat. Um, the video sort of goes through and shows her and her children preparing sort of crickets and other insects um, and eating them and the reporter sort of asks how she how she got into um, entomorphology. The best, oh, they're not the best bit, but the great quote comes out when she sort of says crickets, you start with crickets, crickets and a beer, then you will move up to tarantulas, which is fantastic. So there's doesn't really work well on sort of the podcast, but I'll put a link to the the video so anyone who hasn't seen it can can watch it. And so, like I say, it's for the premiere of her new film, First They Kill My Father, which was uh, sort of a, a Netflix film, and it's based on a a book by Long Young, it was published back in two thousand, called First They Kill My Father, A Daughter of Cambo- um, Cambodia Remembers. And it's a personal account of her and ex- her and experiences um, during Pol Pot's Khmer Rouge regime, um, when so the Khmer Rouge entered Phnom Yem in seventy five. So her and her family had to split up, and she became a child soldier. And the story sort of takes her through the what happened there. But there'll be a, a link to the the video and the the show notes for anyone who hasn't seen it. Eating insects might be the latest food trend. Would you try it? This story comes from us from, from the website Dawn, and it's by Saima S. Hussein. According to a recent news report, insects are heading to Canadian grocery shelves. It's not an attack of killer ants or an infection of locusts, but rather these insects are of the, are the edible variety destined to be sold for consumption. You may just have said ick, but for some years now environmentalists and foodies have hailed bugs as the future of eco-friendly protein, sustaining the environment while trying to feed the over 7 billion mouths on our planet has become an increasing challenge. As author Paul Roberts vividly explains in his book The End of Food, the existing, si- the existing system of making, marketing and moving food is failing because every year it is becoming less and less compatible with the growing population. While there is more high volume and cheaply manufactured food than ever before, the quality of our milk, meat and crops has steadily declined, and the quality of our soil and water used to produce this food has also been compromised. Also consider the great paradox of of the existing system. There are nearly 1 billion people in the world who are considered obese, and another 1 billion who don't get enough to eat. People eating insects is by no means a new concept, the ancient Romans and Greeks ate beetle larvae and locust, and Aristotle wrote about harvesting cicadas to eat as well. Some communities in sub-Saharan Africa and East Asia have a strong culinary tra- tradition of bug consumption, while in Western countries a few high-end restaurants have put bugs on the menu. In 2014, the Food and Agricultural Organization FAO, of the United Nations held the first Insects to Feed the World conference to promote the global consumption of bugs. In 2015, Time magazine ran an article along with the list of the top 10 bug recipes. And last year, Canada's largest supermarket retailer, Loblaw, sent out a press release announcing food trends it was considering for 2017. The company spokesman said that although the immediate future of insect consumption in Canada is likely focused on using them as feed for our livestock, we've seen consumer products such as cricket flour becoming more mainstream. And then they've got recipes for some chocolate chip cookies, banana worm bread and stuff. 
I'll put the links to this article in the show notes. Next we have teachers from Cleswary High School in Newport will eat insects to fight malaria. Edible insects will be on the menu when teachers at Newport, Newport School take on an eating challenge to raise money for charity. Pest control company Rentacle Initial UK will be visiting Lisuari High School, Newport on April the 4th as part of its school tour across the UK. As part of the tour, the firm's pestrant gives people a chance to try a range of ready-to-eat insects like plain roasted locusts and curried crickets. The pestrant team also share interesting facts about insect eating as well as discussing why insects can provide a viable and sustainable food source. Teachers at this school, which also supports the Malaria No More UK or MNM UK charity, will be taking part in an eating challenge at lunchtime to raise extra cash when the Pestrant team bring in some large edible insects for those brave enough to try. Those watching will be encouraged to donate a minimum of 50 pence to raise money for the charity, which is working to prevent the spread of malaria. Phil Wood, Managing Director of rent kill Initial, said, As a global leader in pest control and washroom hygiene, Malaria No More UK is an important organisation for rent kill Initial to support. We, delight, we are delighted to be contributing to such a great cause by taking our educational initiatives out on the road to UK school children. This story comes from the South Wales Argus, and as much as I like the fact that so the the work the pestron do just making it a an eating challenge sort of doesn't move it away from where a lot of us want to see it from sort of a, an I'm a celebrity type uh, dare and a challenge to a an alternative or um, an incorporative meat product. The last story today is by Lewis Kendall, who's the Chronicle staff writer. And it's entitled Clocking In with Cathy and James Rowland, founders of Cowboy Cricket Farms. The building is an innocuous one. A short hop from Boysman Yellowstone International Airport, the newly constructed two story warehouse stands near the edge of a short access road. From the outside, it would be impossible to know about the tens of thousands of crickets chirping away inside its dark walls. Cowboy Cricket Farms, as it's known, was founded in January by husband and wife duo James and Kathy Rowland as a way to bring insects to the dinner table. The bug's benefits, which include high levels of nutrients and low environmental impact compared to other livestock, are easy cells. But convincing people to eat the animal typically viewed as a pest is another matter entirely. It's not hard to see why the pair were attracted to the idea. The insects are, for the most part, low maintenance. The process begins with a batch of females and males, some finely ground organic chicken feed and a soft bed of dirt. 24 hours later the bed, now pot marked with hundreds of comma sized eggs, is removed and placed in a separate container where it is kept hot and humid for 10 days, after which the baby crickets begin to hatch. 6-8 to eight weeks of chicken feed and a, sm- and a small sponge for water and the crickets are fully grown and ready for harvest or freezing before being roasted. And this idea is gaining traction in the States. The Rowlands have consulted with several other farmers across the country and are in early and in early March won second place in Montana Small Business Development Centre's Shark Tank competition, taking home two two and a half thousand dollars. The waiting list for the farm's wholesale products is three years long. The two moved to Montana along with their three children, spending a year in Great Falls before uprooting to Boysman, where they have lived for the past two years. Settling has given both Rollins the opportunity to head back to school at Montana State University, where Cathy studies nutrition and James economics. It was during these studies when Ian Tower's director of food documentary Bugs on the Menu visited their class that Cathy Rollins first got the idea for starting the bug farm. The first thing to do was find the space. After several encounters with incredulous property owners, the two found the Belgrade warehouse, the space will be a temporary home, though as the Rollins plan to hit their capacity of 20 million bugs by September. At $43 a pound of cricket flour, the couple said that insects won't be replacing large-scale livestock anytime soon, but they can act as an alternative to traditional protein sources. I'll put a, I'll put a link to the article and to the, uh, we can find some on bugs on the menu. 
Thanks for listening to the first episode of the Ento podcast. It's a little jittery, so sorry about that. Um, if you go across to www.theentopodcast.co.uk, you can subscribe there, leave me comments, let me know what's happening. We've got a guest form on there if you are into Entomorph Virginia and you'd like to be on the show, um, or if you know someone who you think would be a good fit and would you like to sort of hear on here, um, point them in that direction, let them fill out the form and we'll we'll try and get them on. Uh, so the show should get better as we go along and I get sort of more used to speaking into a mic, but thanks again for, for tuning in, uh, leave me your comments on iTunes, subscribe, uh, even if it's a bad comment, let me know, is it episode one, so we can, we can always fix things. Thanks again. Bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Ento Podcast. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit theentopodcast.co.uk and on Facebook and Twitter at The Ento Podcast. We'll catch you next time.